my name is Jordan. I am on the executive staff with Men of Valor Conference, and I have the pleasure tonight of being joined by one of my dearest brothers. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting him in person over a several day conference last year, and he's coming to us all the way from Louisiana. So let me introduce the warm cup of coffee, Mr. Michael Bodine. Michael, thanks for joining me tonight, brother. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Um, so I know you got to join us last year for our conference and coming back this year to do a breakout. Um, a lot of guys might not know you, though, that are going to be joining us in North Carolina. So tell us a little about yourself. So I live in an Army town that's really the only claim to fame here is Fort Polk Army Base, West Central. Uh, we are pretty much East Texas is how it feels. Uh, a little drive down the road and you're crossing the state line. Married for about to be 18 years to my bride, Tourette, and uh, she's a social worker. We've adopted our son, Charles, uh, since the age of five. He's been in our house and he's 15 now. Um, and my main job is as a teacher, uh, teaching arts and music history. And uh, my, my mom is a broker, so I, I do some real estate travel agency, but most importantly, where my heart feels called and passionate is in ministry, especially men's ministry. And I get to serve on the executive team uh, with Sol Khan and Gaborum. And uh, man, just biggest blessing of my life. Uh, one of the biggest blessings of my life right there. So, yeah. Yeah, I know being in ministry with you is part of the Sol Khan and Gaborum. And um, I've experienced a lot of your wisdom over the years now. It's been like three years since I've been there. So I've gotten to grow and and experience your leadership and your heart for men's ministry. And I know that's a huge piece of why we got you coming and joining us again this year. Um, there goes those lights doing their thing. I know. Hold <laughs> on, I'm going to try and get them back on. You predicted it. Well, no, that's not. It's good. I can see you good. We're good. All right, um, cool. So <laughs> teacher, husband, father, selling houses, planning vacations, and running an international men's or helping run an international men's ministry. How do you juggle it all? Oh, um, honestly, probably one of the biggest lessons over the last uh, almost four years has been, you know, not stopping trying to juggle all of it and learning to say no, uh, learning to trust him, learning uh, that I'm surrounded by people, especially in the ministry, uh, but also in my other hats, I'm surrounded by people who are awesome, amazing, equipped people and uh, getting out of the way and letting them uh, do some of the things that I could do is, uh, you know, that's a blessing that God has provided. I, uh, I'm not an aggressive type A kind of guy, but I get laser focused on a task and I will just go to it without even thinking about Sometimes, including everybody that I, I should, I've uh, been guilty of that. But um, I think one of the big growth things for me is just learning that not only can I not do everything, I'm not called to do everything. And so uh, in terms of juggling it, it's just a constant uh, striving for better balance and, and learning to have those moments and conversation where I, I choose those battles, I choose those tasks. And uh, sometimes I say no or, or pass it off. So that, that's really how I juggle it. I feel like I should be taking notes. That's uh, one of my struggles <laughs> as well as juggling. There's so much stuff that I want to be doing oh, and helping guys yeah. do. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I envy that you've got that figured out. And that's going to be a work in progress for me. Um, so obviously, Men of Valor Conference is engaged for men. It's designed to for men, to grow men, to speak to men. So if you were to focus in kind of what your thoughts are on men's ministry, what would you say? So, you know, if you did a survey of men's ministries all over the world, you know, just like opinions, you're going to find every kind, uh, different focuses, different fits for different kind of guys. And I think for me and my focus in, in just personally and then helping lead the brotherhood that we have within Gabor and Sokhan, I truly feel like our calling is missed so often, even in amazing men's ministries across the world by um, maybe just placating a little bit and watering things down a little bit and man, not having uh, sometimes those tough conversations, ingesting uh, the word in its full spectrum 
and allowing God just to wallop us sometimes. And uh, we do that. I did it for most of my life in an effort to um, keep, keep doing me and uh, keep living my life the way I thought I needed to live it. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest things uh, that, got, that God's changed me with, especially in my home, is, is that idea of self-sacrifice. And that's tough. It's really tough. And so for me, the focus in men's ministry is meeting every man right where he is, but we can't stay there. And that process of change is sometimes pain. It's awesome. Uh, it's glorious. But to get to that point, there's usually going to be some band-aids ripped off uh, of that really hairy part on our arm. You know, it's going to hurt the most. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's worth it every single time. So that's kind of how uh, I, I overall view men's ministry is, um, you know, it's tough, uh, but it's worth it every every part of it. Absolutely. And I think that's anybody who's watching this is going to realize why you fit in so well with what we're trying to do at the Valor Conference and really trying to push men. We're not trying to do the rah-rah thing and pat people on the back. We want men to truly be men of God and grow. And so I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, I don't know if you have your topic picked out for next year, but <laughs> where are we yeah. leaning? What could, what could a guy who's coming to the 2021 conference expect from your breakout session? Man, so often um, when I get the opportunity to teach, I, you know, God always is, is wanting me to teach right from where he's dealing with me. And almost always that involves uh, some of my story, uh, some of what I've been through. And I felt strongly uh, called to talk on, uh, I'm calling it filling the void and having those tough conversations. And, and what, what my focus is in that topic is, that as men seeking after Christ, that has got to mean that we are going to come across those days, those people that God puts in our path, uh, those conversations that are put right in our laps that sometimes we ignore. We've got to sometimes have those tough conversations. Uh, some of that will be about our past. Maybe sometimes that's going to be about something present that God is dealing with. We've got to stop fearing when our wife says, hey, let's talk. That phrase out of my wife's mouth used to <laughs> have me shuddering and coming up with every excuse why I could not talk. Uh, we've got to stop fearing having the tough conversations because when we go there and when we're authentic and man, sometimes when we rip that bandaid off, there is almost always an amazing amount of growth out of that self-realization realization of where God has been pushing us and we've probably been ignoring. And so my breakout is going to be uh, some of my story and my testimony um, and, and how God has chosen to use that in my life and others um, and grow in me in my home and family. And uh, also just reinforcing how many times we are called in scripture to rise up. And uh, there is not one definition of um, that masculinity, that macho guy that, you know, we all grow up, uh, you know, watching and patterning our lives after. Um, there's not a mold for that. And the, the biggest macho, most masculine thing we can do is live our authentic lives every day uh, in the light of Christ, in the context of Christ and becoming more like him every day. So that's uh, as short a capsule as I can put on uh, my breakout there's a lot of words sorry that sounds like it's going to be an awesome breakout and i'll probably find myself on the, the front seat of that one um so we get to pick two you, man. in august so i'm looking forward to it man uh, don't want to take too much of your time i know you're a busy guy but i appreciate you joining me here tonight and guys if you're watching this video i hope you'll check out um our website menofvalorconference.org get registered come and join us this is just one peek into the many sessions that we're going to have at this year's conference. If you need any more information, feel free to reach out to us through our Facebook page, Men of Valor Conference Southeast, and we will get those questions answered for you. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in August.